Well, Sierra Skeeter and I are heading to the remote log cabin. I think we're just gonna stay for one night, but it should be a good time. So we're just walking up to the log cabin here, Sierra and I. But yeah, something definitely got in here. I'm guessing it was a pine marten. You can see it ripped open this bag of flour and scattered a bunch of stuff around. And then all my dishes and all that are kind of knocked over. So I'm guessing it was a pine marten because there's pine marten tracks, I mean, all around, around here. So, and it looks like he uh, left a present there on the countertop. But yeah, I guess we'll clean this up and Skeeter will uh, be on Pine Martin duty tonight, keeping those out of the cabin. But anyways, it's kind of funny. You know, like, like that's always why it's interesting coming to the cabin. You never know what you're going to run into or what you're going to see. I always assume worst case scenario, like I always think a bear got in here. Like I'm always kind of ready for that when I walk on the cabin. But yeah, definitely a first for the Pine Martin. But like I said, I'd, I'd way rather have this than a bear get in here because a bear would totally trash everything. And it's not exactly easy getting stuff in here. So that's that's the bummer. It's not necessarily losing the supplies. It's having to re-carry things through the woods to get back in here that makes it a bummer. So you might hear a logging operation going on. Uh, they're doing a lot of logging in the area around the cabin here. You know, it's a good densely forested area in Superior National Forest. So they do a lot of logging uh, within the Superior National Forest because there's a lot of good timber, um, like you guys have seen. But... It looks a lot different on the way to the cabin now and that's how i access this is through like logging roads you know because they still do logging you know around here obviously but um yeah it looks way different we see her and i actually had a hard time finding my trail coming back in here just because everything looks so different i mean half of the trail that you guys see me pulling my sled on uh when i'm coming to the cabin it's it's just completely flat i mean it's completely logged off now so uh, i had it took a while for me to get my bearings and figure out where i was but um the good news is uh, that we should be able to drive closer to the cabin now during the summer. Um, we should be able to get about a quarter mile closer, but um, they, the, where they made this new logging road, it kind of got rid of a lot of the bigger obstacles that prevented me from getting a road in here. So we'll see, we might be able to get a, a road right into the log cabin now and our new cabin that we're gonna be building on the other part of the property. So there's pros and cons. I did have this camera pointed at the cabin, so I'm hoping, and there was Pine Martin tracks all over right in front here, so I'm sure we'll see the culprit on camera. So just to show you guys how different this looks, I'm walking, you guys have seen me walk this trail a lot, and uh, right up here is where they started logging. Well, here, I'll just turn around, turn the camera around and show you. So this is my trail and, and look at this. This is this was all heavy forest that you guys have seen me pulling my sled on thousands of times. And so it just looks totally different now. But on the bright side, this is gonna be excellent hunting in the next couple of years. But yeah, it threw me for a loop, you know, because that trail or my trail, you know, that I made uh, to go to the cabin. I mean, I had certain landmarks. I knew like every tree, um, you know, every stump, every rock on the way in, you know, I could, I could navigate that trail in the dark, like no problem. And I had landmarks and now they're all gone. Everything's, I mean, completely different now. So I was kind of lost coming here. It, it took me a while to figure out where stuff was. But it's absolutely crazy. So the, the log cabin is back through the woods that way. And where I used to park, my car is like way up there but like i said this was all thick forest um you know a couple months ago and it just it looks so different now all right well sierra and i decided to head into the local town into ely to uh have dinner so we're just getting back here it's only i don't know what 4 45 yeah. but it's pretty dark this time of year at that time but we'll get our little pine martin mess cleaned up and Get a fire going in here. Yeah, Sierra's excited to get a fire going. It's not that cold, but it's cold when the sun goes down. Oh, shoot. Oh, look at that. Would there be light? We have lights. I'm surprised that thing's still charged. <laughs>
What do you think, Skeeter? Are you excited for another winter at the remote off-grid log cabin? Skeeter, do you like being at the cabin? What is it? Oh, the bag? <laughs> yeah, I didn't like you didn't. I mean, I don't even think you ate any. I think you just ripped it open and thought that was a good time. You like this spot, don't you? It's probably you probably this probably brings back a lot of memories for you. You like being at the cabin, don't you, Skeeter? He does a lot. Er, er, er. Six of diamonds here. Ooh. Is that the EcoFlow River Mini? It is. All right, well, after beating Sierra at several board games, I think we're going to call it a night. Tomorrow morning we're going to get up early and we're going to head down the Echo Trail and do a little hiking, maybe some grouse hunting with Skeeter, um, and just, yeah, a little bit of exploring, so um, we're excited for that. All right, Sierra and I just woke up. We got a little bit of a fire going here, but we're going to have some percolated coffee and then hit the road. Nothing better than a fresh snowfall sitting inside the warm cabin. Skeeter? Skeeter, are you ready to come in? Come on. Come on, Skeeter. Come on. Well, we're all packed up and ready to head out of here. So we're gonna start to walk to the car. And it's starting to snow pretty good now, so it should make the rest of the day more fun. I think we're good here. Should we go ski? Let's hit the Echo Trail. What, got snow on your face? Yeah. You all shot right back and hit me in the face. Maybe a little bit more this way, huh? Hey? All right, there it is. Pointed right at the cabin. This is about the time of year that moose last year walked right in front of the cabin. And I was really hoping it would come back through this winter. So, who knows, maybe maybe next time we'll we'll catch the moose on camera. We're supposed to get six inches of snow in the next couple days, so next time I'm here it'll look a lot different.
There you go. This was all woods a couple months ago. Looked just like the forest we just came out of. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, there's nothing out here, so noise travels really far. Like, you can hear that machine running. It's probably a mile away. But it seems like it's just right over there. No, it does not. All right, well we made it home, but before I end this video, I wanna show you guys a couple things that we did inside. So Sierra showed this on her channel already, but we have this Dynaglow heater that we got last year. Um, on sale. I think this is one that they had displayed. It was like 130 bucks and we didn't want to pass it up um, For this reason right here. It's a backup heater for when we leave so Nice thing about it is it's got a built-in thermostat So I just set it on one and right now you can see just the pilot lights going but then when um, it gets the, to the desired temperature or whatever it'll kick on um, Which is nice. So I have it set. So it basically kept the cabin at 55 degrees which is perfect because um, I just don't want our solar equipment getting that cold, you know, um, we don't have any plumbing or anything that can freeze But I worry about the solar since there's quite a bit of money in the solar batteries and all that back there now I don't want that getting exposed to really cold temperatures. I just know it's not good for it So that's the nice thing about the heater is that it protects that stuff Plus it's also nice not coming back to a totally froze up cabin, you know, because it takes about You know four, three or four hours to warm it up from freezing temperatures. So um, we installed that about a week ago, and it's been awesome. So there it just kicked on. So you can see it's just a blue flame, vent-free heater. So it doesn't need to be vented or anything. So it's nice. And we do have a, CO, or a carbon monoxide detector in the hallway over here. But yeah, it's been working out awesome. I'm really happy with it. And I also added the ceiling. So very easy. I just took some quarter-inch plywood, screwed it up to those beams, and then I took two by fours and ran, ran them along all the seams and used really long screws and sucked those up into the beams and that also helps hold the ceiling up. But it's got fiberglass insulation. Um, so we now have, yeah, the insulated ceiling, which is really nice because before all the heat went up to the top and it was just taking a lot more firewood to heat up the cabin than it should. You know, it would be not chilly, but it'd be 70 degrees down here and then like 90 up top. So. We were kind of heating up a big area that we weren't even really using, so it didn't make a whole lot of sense. We do want to convert this to a full upstairs, so I'm going to add more beams over the winter here, and then this will be a full upstairs, so you'll be able to walk on this. But right now, it's like an attic. Um, it's just those three beams that we have here, so you can't walk on the plywood up there. Um, but like I said, you will be able to, because I'm going to add more, and that'll be really nice to have a full upstairs. But I'm really glad that we added this when we did. We haven't had real cold temperatures yet. It got down to one degree, I think, was the coldest night that we had. Um, but we had the ceiling um, up when it when we had that temperature. And yeah, it made all the difference in the world. It was nice and toasty down here, like 80 degrees. And we used a lot less firewood. So it made, it made a huge difference. So anyways, that's about all that's new around here as of right now. Um, I'll probably be getting a lot more projects done in the next week or two now. You know, this, this week was kind of weird with Thanksgiving. We were gone for a couple days. I went ice fishing on Red Lake, Red Lake, Minnesota, and brought home some fish. So Sierra and I have fresh walleye to eat. And yeah, we'll be doing a lot more ice fishing here soon once the lakes freeze up and banging out some more projects. But uh, 
yeah, just kind of waiting for some colder temperatures and a lot more snow. And hopefully we get it this weekend. They're saying six inches potentially. So we'll see if that happens or not. But anyways, I appreciate you guys watching this video and stay tuned. Um, I look forward to all the projects coming up this winter.